Hello there ladies and gentlemen and welcome to user one productions. My name is David in today's quick unity tutorial We're gonna be going over a basic first-person controller for your game. This is gonna be pretty bare-bones I will be doing an advanced first-person controller very soon in another tutorial So if you guys want to keep an eye out for that remember to click that notification bell when you subscribe And if you come to enjoy this tutorial, please remember to drop me a like I really do appreciate it also, in the description down below, you can find my Google Drive where I supply all my scripts, models, sound effects, everything I do in these tutorial series for a free download for you guys to use. Something else in the description you can find is the link to the Discord server, which we just broke over 400 people in there. So if you guys want to join that, I post updates, I post stuff that I'm working on, and also it's a nice little hub for everyone to come together, show off your own ideas. And if you do have questions, there are many very talented people in there always willing to help. With all that being said, my friends, let's dive into the simple FPS controller tutorial. So before diving into the tutorial, I'm here in my test scene. You can find this inside the Google Drive for a free download. Um, but besides that, this is basically it. A very simple little movement in the camera. You can use WASD to move, hold shift to run, and you can jump. That is going to be the basics of the today's tutorial. So the reason I'm actually making this is because a huge disappointment to many that Unity actually got rid of their starter assets, which I use in a lot of my tutorials. And I've been getting a ton of questions on how to actually make a first person character and how to make a move and all the systems that go with him. So what I'm going to do is actually open a new scene. So all I have in this scene at the moment is a light source. And we have also the test scene. So what we're going to do is actually we're going to make sure this is positioned at zero, which it is. That's the whole scene right here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go game object and I'm going to make a capsule. Let's actually bring him up a little bit and then let's bring him over. So that way he's actually on the ground here like so. So this is going to be what we're using for our player. What I'm going to do is actually rename him to player and then I'm going to right click him and add a camera. We need to make sure the camera is going to be a little bit taller than him like so. Right about there looks right. And personally what I like to do with the camera is I like to change the FOV to 80 which is a pretty good starting FOV for most modern video games. We're also going to change the clipping planes down to 0.01 .01, so that way we don't have any weird clipping when we walk towards walls or if we're holding an object or something like that. Next, what we're going to do is you guys can either copy the code as I go over it, or you guys can download it from the Google Drive in the description down below. We're going to be taking a look at the simple FPS, and I have tags or notes on the side of everything that uh, the script is actually doing. I'm just going to go over it very basically. Uh, I'm not going to get into too much depth of what everything is doing, but uh, we have a few variables at the top here. We have a walk speed, run speed, and jump force. We also have a transform for our camera and a float for the mouse sensitivity. And then we have three private variables, which is a character controller, which is going to be added to our player. The player's velocity, we're going to use that down here to tell if we're jumping. And then a private bool for is the player jumping. In our start function, so the start function happens on the first frame that the game is started, we want the controller to equal our character controller. And then we just lock the cursor to the center of our screen. Coming up in the update function, which happens every single frame the game is running, uh, we want that to happen in the update because every single frame you might be pressing a different input and we want those inputs to line up with what we're doing in the game. So right here we have a float move speed. This is just going to be telling if we are pressing down the left shift, which is going to be the run. If we are, he's running. If not, we are walking. And then our movement, WASD, is our vertical and horizontal axes, which we have referenced here. So we could tell if we're moving up, down, left, right, diagonally. And then a vector 3 for grabbing its new position. And then just moving through the character controller. We have a very basic jumping system right here, which is just saying if the player is grounded and he presses down the jump button, then he's going to be pushed upwards using gravity. Then once the player hits that specific point, so say our jump force is 10, he's only going to be able to jump so high before gravity actually kicks in and brings him back down. Then we have the controller for the camera here, 
which is just when we're moving our mouse to look around and we want to make sure we're rotating the transform accordingly. So if you're pressing W and looking left and right, it's still going to remain going straight. And then down here, the camera is looking up and down and we just want to lock him so that way when we look down, he's not doing a full 360 like he's doing a somersault or something like that. So we actually clamp his movement for the camera right there. I'll, get, I'll show you that in the game in a second here. So back in the Unity, we want to go to our player, add the simple FPS to him. Our camera object is going to go into camera transform. And these settings are adjustable inside the editor. But we also want to add a character controller because that's what's going to control the player's movement pretty much. So now if we play the game, we are all set and ready to go, although we can still see our capsule at the bottom there. Uh, so what I'm actually going to do is click on our player mesh renderer and just turn that off. That way the collider is still there, but we don't see him. So here's what I'm talking about the clamp thing. As you could see, once he hits 90 degrees looking up or down, he cannot look anymore. Now you can adjust this through the script here. So say you wanted him to look, um, let's do 80. We can go into Unity again, and now he can only look 80 instead of straight down. Your script I'm going to be giving to you guys is going to have the 90. You guys can change that any which way you possibly want. And now we are free to move around, change our variables, run, jump, uh, and back to the clipping planes. Let me just show you why I changed that. So if we have it to the normal 0.3 that comes with Unity, if we walk over to a wall and kind of go like this where we're looking, it's going to be clipping. You can see that at the top left of the game screen. So by changing that to 0 0.01, play the game, it's no longer doing that weird clipping thing. It might be doing it, but it is far out of the camera's view to be able to see that. And now we're free to jump around, play with our variables, make our player super slow, super fast. Just a very basic tutorial on how to get a first person player working in your game. Again, because Unity got rid of their starter assets, which is a huge disappointment to the huge Unity community, but they gotta do what they gotta do. As I've said before, my friends, if you do come to enjoy this video, please remember to drop me a like, subscribe if you're new, join the Discord where we have over 400 people in there willing to help, willing to share their experiences with you in Unity, and it is just a great little community that is constantly growing every single day. And once more, all the scripts, models, sound effects, this test scene that you see right here, the script we just used, uh, is linked in the description on a Google Drive for a free download. In a more later on tutorial, we're going to be looking at the advanced player controller, which takes this script and makes it completely advanced. We're talking crosshairs, camera smoothing, footsteps, and much more to that one. So keep an eye out for that. And with all that being said, my friends, this is User One Productions signing off for now. Peace.